Hi, my name is Jo. I'm from Canada and I'm living in Poland. Today I'm going to tell you a spellbinding story. So let's begin. Jan Sobieski III was one of those kings of Poland who received the crown thanks to his talents as a commander. At the head of the Hussars, he won many glorious victories. His greatest triumph was the crushing of the Turkish army in Vienna in 1683. This victory stopped the expansion of the Ottoman Empire into Europe. These days, we would say that the king was a born soldier, both in spirit and in appearance. You only have to look at his portraits to see that he was a strong man and his knightly armor added to this impression. The first thought that comes to mind when looking at the king's image is, what kind of stallion could carry such a powerful knight? Indeed, the king's mount must have been an exceptional animal. Such was Pawash, a thoroughbred Arabian of chestnut color. It's no exaggeration to say that Pawash had his share in the victory at Vienna, and in one of the battles at Parkany, it was only thanks to his swift steed that the king survived when he fell into a Turkish ambush. It also seemed that Pawash never lost his strength. Chroniclers record that in six days Sobieski rode 350 kilometers, 270 miles on him, and at the memorable Battle of Vienna, he carried the corpulent monarch in his armor for the whole day. The name of the king's stallion also had a knightly meaning, a cudgel. The cudgel was a weapon used by the Hussars, the heavy armed Polish cavalry, which had a reputation for being invincible. The Hussars often confirmed this in their battles. Hussars would attach large wings to their armor, which made an incredible impression on the enemy during the charge. Hussar horses were selected for their stamina and specially trained in the Hussar manner. Such training consisted of the horse galloping with its rider in full armor along a narrow path about 30 meters long. At both ends were circles three meters in diameter where the steed had to turn without breaching their circumference. This ensured the extraordinary effectiveness of the Hussar charge. Towards the end of his life, Sobieski was very ill and depressed by the troubles of his state, which, despite victories and wars, did not find peace in the face of successive enemies. Unable to leave the palace out of fear of catching a cold, the aged monarch ordered horses to be brought to the windows of his chambers. As recorded in a chronicle of the time, having ordered the steeds to be brought from the stables, he thus watched them for a quarter of an hour, then ate his dinner with a good appetite. Surely, looking at those horses, he felt relief and recalled the days in the past when he rode his powers to defeat his enemies, met the emperor, and announced to the world his great victory at Vienna. This last scene was immortalized by the outstanding Polish painter Jan Matejko in the painting Sobieski at Vienna. The artist depicts the King Jan Sobieski III sitting proudly on his pałasz, handing a letter of triumph to the Pope. His victorious commanders and soldiers are gathered around him. For Matejko, it was equally important to faithfully render the image of the king and his mount. He was aware that viewers would pay attention to this. This is another proof of how important horses were in Polish history. Today, Master Matejko's painting hangs in the Vatican Museum in memory of the great Polish monarch who was called the protector of Europe. And that's everything, folks. I hope you like this story. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Oh, 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 oh,